let's just jump right into it because we got we got great stories. These this is one of the rare weeks, sorry, beat that <laughs> all the stories that we have. We have four stories all together. We got three three up here at the top, and then, then our main event at the bottom. I like okay, I like this. I don't we don't have to change anything. Let's do it. We're good. And the big the first story is the a Lord of the Rings TV series is in the works over at Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we I think we talked about this what two months ago with Jeff Bezos wanting wanting his Game of Thrones. I think he yes. found it. I, I honestly think he found it now. <laughs> if this is coming that, to fruition. I definitely was thinking in my head game of thrones if no one else has said it uh when i heard the heard of this heard the story and um understanding what the purpose of it is is for amazon to finally kind of create their their niche or their genre their their thing or they 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 really haven't been doing very well very good on their their original series or yeah it, it is really really interesting because they've like the award show stuff that they have, it's you know, it's basically transparent. You know, that's yes. the show oh, that they got. Right. I was gonna say aside from transparent, of course, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And the grand and tour. Yeah, and they have the grand tour, which is you know, the top gear boys, you know, their oh. their new show, which oh. which is a lot of people like that, month. right? Like that's yeah. a that's a really popular thing, not even just uh oh yeah. In the US. That's is it is it mostly UK it's, or it's 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 a worldwide thing. So it's one of those because I've actually started rewatching the Grand Tour, just because I'm like, all right, I need my fix of Jeremy Clarkson and you know all those guys. But it's one of those things that like, there's such big, you know, reaction. You know, like there was por- there was uh, mentions on uh, Reddit on r slash Top Gear that do we still do this or do we break it off? and do a grand tour subreddit now they have done a grand tour subreddit but basically it's everything is sort of in in here you know they talk about the american version that doesn't suck um, <laughs> which is, is amazing to say i don't i didn't never thought i'd ever say that you know a top gear america that doesn't suck to put it um, in perspective I don't have any feelings about cars. I don't care. And I watch yeah. that show religiously because it's just great personalities. Really? It's like Planet of the Apes in cars. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a great that's honestly a great way to say it. Because I mean a lot of it with all with now I, I'm I'm gonna exp- expand this to all three, you know, the Grand Tour, the UK Top Gear, and the American Top Gear. The all three that I watch you have these great hosts that are doing this these great partnerships that you have you, you know you've got the originals with the grand tour and it's like you know you're seeing all these guys you know doing you know you got jeremy clarkson will say stuff vaguely racist and all that stuff and just the with how well it all works together and then you get the new uk version with matt leblanc uh, oh shit. rory <laughs> Okay, the, if you skip this season that Chris Harris was in, or not Chris Harris, uh, Chris Evans was in, it is good because you see this this camaraderie amongst these three guys. Um, you know, they they pick on each other. You know, they pick on uh, Matt LeBlanc for being Joey and friends. I was going to ask that. if Joey was on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then uh, they okay. and then they 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 all sort of pick on each other. They do like the ribbing that the original guys used to do on the show beforehand, and then you got the American version where they do the same thing there's no real pressure from anything else it's and they've made it their own while keeping it similar to the british version and it's it's a fun thing so so, so what do they do they i mean you said it's not just all about cars do they so each um the, the grand tour is a little bit different because they're the gimmick with them them is each week they're in they have a mobile studio it's a giant tent that it, they film for all the uh in the in studio bits where they're it's the three hosts talking you know with the audience setting up the different uh film packages whether it be a car review or the weeks uh you know like adventure of like you know they did one on the grand tour of doing a grand tour going up from like venice and then hitting or no they ended at venice and they started in like in like the middle of italy 
So like a, tra- a travel show. Yeah, anyway. yeah, it's a lot of it's like travel. There's they okay. don't really focus in on too much of like the, I can the towns. It, it's but it's yeah. about the cars, but it's they talk about everything that surrounds that whole genre. So you don't yeah. they don't care about how much. Well, they tell you how much horsepower it has and make jokes about it. Sure. But it's really about the personalities that make jokes between them. They're always making very, very terrible jokes, inappropriate jokes about each other. And that's the fun. And okay. the cars yeah. are just uh, the painting on it. And yeah. to come back to the Amazon thing, that was a great get for them because it had a huge worldwide audience, even though it was a BBC thing, it went around the globe. So. It cost them also a lot. That was one of the main things that the BBC had the issues with, that they were spending a lot in the production value because they mm. blew up stuff and crashed cars and stuff like that. But they okay. made a good decision there. And then there was The Tick. I think that was a success as well for them. The Tick, the tick has critical success. With I mean, with, there was some fan, no, some fan success, but... Like I don't think there's going to be the awards for it. You know, we're not going to see it. You know, being uh, nominated, whatever you get nominated for with television. Well, they got money just by the sea. So as a movie studio, they succeed. Yeah. As a TV show like thing, they have different things like John Claude Van Damme's new <laughs> show and other things that, like Netflix, do their own thing. That's okay. But now with Lord of the Rings, if that's on the table, they're talking about it it's not signed yet but they're talking about it because they had to clear the rights with warner brothers and the estate of tolkien mm-hmm. because new line cinema that made the movies fucked them over they told yeah. that, that the first lord of the ring and the second one didn't make money they lost money on it officially yeah which is dumb <laughs> But so accounting schemes, yeah. Oh, and Man yeah. in the High Castle, that was good. I, or at least I liked it. But yeah, Man in the High Castle. See, so it's like the problem is that they have quite a bit of Amazon has quite a bit of stuff that people go, oh yeah, like you like you just did, like oh Man <laughs> in the High Castle. I forgot about this. Mm-hmm. But they don't have the oh Stranger Things is coming out. Oh, I gotta watch Stranger Things or the Marvel yeah. Netflix shows. Or you know, or you know, the house you know, Marvel's Hulu show yeah. and all this stuff. You know, they don't have these things that are built that are buzzworthy, mm-hmm. and so that's where I feel like you do a Lord of the Rings show. That's where you know where they're going to get these things. Um, I believe they're also uh, Amazon is also still doing their pilot season stuff, which I enjoyed. That's the one thing I've loved about Amazon is their whole pilot season, because it seems like we're getting stuff that. You know, we haven't really heard of, and we're actually getting to see uh, something. Ab- uh, absolutely, the- um, I I think. W- w- but one of the re- frustrations I've ha- I've had with it is that some of those pilots come out, and then the actual show may be out two, three years later. Such yeah. as was it Sneaky Pete? Yeah, Sneaky yeah, Pete. Yeah, Sneaky Pete. Pete. There was a there was a pretty big gap in between. I yeah, with a couple of years in between, I believe, and I don't. And- I haven't heard anything about it coming back. I don't think it did as well because it took so long for them to get True. it out. True. And that's where I feel like a lot of it with the whole pilot season, it's sort of, you know, it is that dual edged sword because, you know, they like at first with the the first one where we got uh what was it, Alphas and Beta House. Great shows. It was way. Yeah, it was, you know, there was a quick turnaround because they only did the pilot like they announced and they made a big fuss about about these pilot seasons or about the pilot season and then like they're like okay what ones do you like and they're like okay boom these go into production and then you turn around and they did it uh two other you know they've done it you know other times it's where we got you know man in the high castle and transparent were from these and then they realized okay we'll, we'll give you some more time to you know to breathe because they they are waiting for us to want to see this stuff. And the take was another such case that where they did a yeah, pilot and then picked up a one year and a half later, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because also they're doing it, you know, where it's all Amazon doing it. That's where I think they would benefit more from what like what they're doing with the show catastrophe. It which is uh, in here in America is another Netflix original or not Netflix. Amazon. Uh, Am- Amazon, Amazon exclusive, yeah. because they co-produce it with Channel Four over in the UK, mm. so they don't have to worry about 
oh well here's the pilot okay they like it it's boom you got the first season how do people like it if they like it great if not channel four good luck with it you know workshop it elsewhere on you know for here for you know a global distribution uh, side of things and so it's like they do stuff like that but not just in the uk you know like like how netflix does you know where it's all over bringing in stuff that they're like well i think you know i think this might work you know here or there and then you you finally will have a netflix competitor i think bringing in lord of the rings as a tv series is going to be that thing that will help them you know yeah it it definitely will help them I, i i agree um yeah, so uh, there's no, there's no. I, I, I'm kind of gla- glancing this story, but I guess there's no confirmative, confirmed type of version that or yeah. or what they're workshopping yet, right? They're shopping it around. Uh, HBO was also interested, but dropped their interest just uh, recently. Uh huh. So Amazon seems to be the main competitor, and as they had a change in the upper echelon because Roy Price was another sexual harassment. Case. Yeah. Right. Boy, they're going uh, like flies. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Uh, now we got this situation with a new person in charge, Chantal Yugado. Y- oh, ooh, don't ask me how to pronounce that name. Y G U A D O. Um, and yeah, yeah. That there you name. go. <laughs> that <laughs> name. <laughs> so things are changing, and that could be the first step to make a stand and show off what she's going to do and the idea is there but what would you like to see in that case do, doing the so that's an interesting again? thing that's mm. i what i could honestly see happening is if they're going to do if they're going to go right into into lord of the rings i think it would be you know they could do some of these stories and then you know focus in a little bit more on some of the characters Right, like, uh, with, let's get Gollum's backstory. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, like this um, could be a, a perfect time to expand on some of the, on you know, some of these characters that we had in here that you know didn't get a lot of screen time. I'm thinking of, for instance, what is it, Pippin, uh, from uh, Out of right, the Hobbits, right? Because you know, everyone, if you think about it, the the actor and the character are both forgotten. Because everyone's like, oh, there's Frodo and Samwise, and then there's Dominic Monaghan's character, mm-hmm. but everyone no- more knows it because it's Dominic Monaghan, and he went later on to do Lost and all that stuff, mm-hmm. but everyone forgets about, uh, and I only I can only remember his first name, but uh, of the dude you know named Billy, who played Pippin, and there, and it's sort of like, uh, like I, I, think, I don't think he was in Two Towers at all. Huh. So, in the same time frame as the movies, uh, the main story plays, or just before afterwards how would you approach that i mean see that's where i don't i don't know because i i honestly liked the movies the three movies who doesn't yeah but i mean i and i had my problems with the hobbit uh movie franchise should have been two but i feel like it is highly possible with the rich content that we have in this universe that we could get I'd say probably at least six seasons out of, out of this. And this isn't even doing like, okay, the first season's going to be, uh, or the first two seasons are going to be The Hobbit. The second or the third season yeah, is going to be Fellowship. Right. They definitely like, couldn't retell the, the stories. It's, it's got to yeah. be more detail into one group of people or another or multiple groups interacting yeah. I, I don't know but uh you know i mean there could be, i don't know be a, a a season on the wizards and you know there's a season on uh, elves i, 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 I don't know. talking I trees look, <laughs> well, I, I look at this and i mean you, you're not that far off because what was what was one of the hottest video games that came out three weeks ago was shadow of mordor who owns that you game know, the, who's the publisher <laughs> good Warner brothers Disney. Of Warner so, Brothers? I don't think so. But no, but what I'm saying is there it, it is not it is not a property that is based strictly on the source material. The source material. It is expand it's to use oh, Star yeah. Wars, it's expanded universe stuff. 
if, if there's if there's any any universe to create a um a series of different stories this 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 is the, uh, right up there i mean this is yeah. lord of the rings universe is huge it's a prequel as i understand the game shadow of mortar the place just right right after the yeah. first ring bearer got uh, killed i didn't play it so i wouldn't lean too much into it but i was thinking why not do it with other characters that mm -hmm. are like a companion piece that you have the story going on and you get to see aspects of the movies that they couldn't cover through the mm. eyes of other characters you can get into. That would be great. That would uh, fill in a lot of pieces for people. And um, yeah, I think it would get a lot of the fans that are, you know, real hardcore, who grew up reading the books before watching the films or any of that, you know, really, really into it to try to catch those in pieces that were missing. So yeah, yeah totally. I think so, yeah, definitely. Uh, they they picked a good story uh, line to um to create something around to you know kick off their own Game of Thrones. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's one of those. Even if they did a, so I'll I'll, put, I'll phrase it this way: even if they did a strictly Lord of the Rings TV series, they didn't expand into the Hobbit. There are this summer summer the Brindian, um, that one. Um, the S book word that always confused the hell out of me when I saw it in bookstores. The two million characters in it and all um, the story, yeah. Yeah. And they just focused on this. They would have a more logical, by sticking to the source material, not getting uh, area for spinoffs, which is where what a lot of the people want. You know, they're, they're looking at it. Oh, hey, Garly, thank you for doing the phonetic version i will still probably butcher it but thank you <laughs> um in the youtube oh. chat he posted the, the oh, simarillion but so thank you so you look at those and there's so there's still this you know a lot of source material that could then be spin-offs you know we don't have to do the stretch of well here's george r, r. martin working with the producers to work on this when he should be writing the books and getting those out so the fans could quit their belly aching. Yeah, and all that. trusting Benny of the is another story. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. We're talking about spin offs. <laughs> <laughs> At all the point, maybe, but uh, I'm yeah. not too keen on it, to, to be honest. Shall we, yeah, so, shall we move on to the next story? That uh, Justice League star Henry Cavill, or wait, is he a Justice League star? <laughs> Says DCEU hasn't worked praises wonder woman as first step in new direction this is you know with justice league you know really close to happening you know the, the, like being released yeah he sat on and talked about a lot of the problems that people have myself included with this what i always tell people is i enjoy the movies but mm -hmm. they can be better they can sure. honestly be, because i feel like if they are and you know, I mean, I'm not make, gonna make any stranger here as to not being a comic book fan because if you're watching the video, you can see my room is like <laughs> yeah. just regurgitate. I got four fucking long boxes of comic books for crying out loud. True, and the contender and, game. Yeah, and the contender game. Uh, <laughs> I haven't touched <laughs> that. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and a and a god in the shed over here by Baby Groot oh. to share swag from other people. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. So you look at the DC EU DC FU whatever the hell they're calling this thing, the DC universe of movies that they have. Yeah. Start with Man of Steel. Go to go to Batman versus Superman. Both of those miss the heart of so many characters that influence the main characters. That's the big thing I had problem with for both of them. Jonathan Kent. And, and granted, this is probably coming from, you know, I was heavily persuaded by the fact that, um, and Kevin Costner, great actor, not taking anything away from him, but I prefer, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Duke Boy from, on uh, Smallville as the, uh, as the, de as Jonathan Kent, hmm. um, just because how he did it, it was, yes, it was still protect my son, but it wasn't don't do the right thing. It was don't get caught because I know you want to do it because I've taught you you always do the right thing. It's very telling mm -hmm. that even Kevin Costner get can butcher that character that is so iconic, so it yeah. speaks volumes. Yeah. And I can see that. Yeah. And so it's it's just one of these things like I look at this and 
so as beat me and beat were talking about this earlier and he and he was you know saying well this one sucked this one sucked this one sucked i'm like suicide squad was okay it was if if i was if i was i i, I like suicide squad okay i'm gonna I'll, I'll come out and say it. i like suicide squad i don't know i would have if i was making if i was the executive for the dc and doing all their stuff that i would do that movie so soon as the third movie in your film universe. Hmm. Okay. Why? Because of the fact that where it does set up some villains, it sets them up in this way to not really be used with the heroes. It goes you're, even you further because they pick stories like Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad that you can do that if you have a universe set up in the movies that you can say, okay, now we do something different. Because what Frank Miller did was something, a comment on the comics before and brought change to the whole thing. But first, yeah. do you had the original Superman, Batman stories that laid the groundwork. If you don't have that in the movies and just go for that special stories that aren't that good to begin with, or, well, depending on who you, who you ask, you get it right. It's the thing with Man of Steel broke so many in my view, character cues that Superman should have, and then you double down with the darkness and with the things that Batman does, killing or not killing. People said, yeah, he killed in comics before, but these were the comics that weren't the usual Batman comics. They did it because to separate themselves from the rest, to say to make a comment on the whole thing. Yeah. And going there from the get-go wasn't the best game plan if they had any game plan at all, that's another question. But Suicide Squad had a schizophrenia in, in it because they made the trailers that hit so well. And then they took the guys that made these trailers and let them re-edit or make parts of the movie themselves. So there were two teams making that movie. And it, in my opinion, showed very much in the end product. So you had yeah inconsistencies in the tone and pacing and other things that were just to me obvious and i didn't enjoy the movies because of that and it was because i wanted to hate dc because like corey always says we love dc comics we would love to enjoy these movies because we are such a fan of the source material and other things but we can deny what's presented in in front of us and just say yeah no one of the things i like from this article here that is mentioned is the fact that you know because this is from an an article that's for rake magazine that henry cavill is going to be part of he puts even if marvel didn't exist we'd struggle mm -hmm. that's big that is huge for a lot of fans to understand well don't they all that, struggle i mean it's uh you know you can't no one's ever going to be happy with any version of any of these stories true True, but at the same time, though, whether it's, it's Marvel or DC, I think they yeah. both have the same. His point was, I mean, struggles. Yeah, but his point was more there to say we struggle critically and with the fans, mm -hmm. not just because we are. So you, that, you think that's what Cavill meant when he said? Yes. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. He, he, he did. Yeah, with that, because you know, it's one of those things. Like what a lot of people take from them is. And sure, I will get you know I will give them the credit. Yeah, it comes across that way when you know what was it three years ago when Man of Steel just came out? They were filming Batman vs Superman, mm -hmm. and DC and you know DC and Warner Brothers announced their lineup for the next forty goddamn years. They announced <laughs> all these movies shortly thereafter. Mar or you know right on that same time, Marvel announced their whole Phase Three when they were finishing up Phase Two up to twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah, both of them yeah. until twenty until twenty twenty. The problem with that is people then go, well, Marvel has stuff to back it up. Marvel has the this you know all these films that they've done to back up what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. What do you have? You're coming off the the high horse of the Dark Knight, <laughs> but are you using Christian Christian Bale in here? Are you using Christopher Nolan? Are you using any of those people in here? No, well, so you're starting over. So what makes you think that we're going to want all these things? And then even then, it's like, you look at what Marvel's done with their stuff. They're using bigger named heroes 
before the Justice League or before the Avengers, where here it's we get two, you know, we get or essentially three. They're setting up the trinity of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And then it's, oh, here's Justice League. And then here's these two other movies about the supplemental characters. And, and oh, this is, it, it, here's this one from over. And it's, it's just more confusing for the Fairweather fan or the person who is going to discover the comics from the movies. Mm. Mm hmm. Good point. Yeah, yeah. So is so. How is this uh, different for Wonder Woman? Just is it because the you know it got it's. I th I think a lot of it is the style because you look at the three movies. They have a dark tone to them, and this is the first one. You you look at Man of Steel. It has a dark tone. Yes. Superman is not. Superman is not a dark hero. Oh, he can no. be, but no. in he the right be. context, first he, can, he he can be. But he is typically not considered dark. He is he is the antithesis to Batman. Batman is the Dark Knight. Batman, it is easy to do this. Superman, he he restrains himself to so as to not be the you know the ruler of Krypton or the ruler of Earth like General Zod wants to do mm -hmm. and all that. And yet here you have this where, you know, he's doing these moves that Superman really probably wouldn't do at least right away. And then you get Suicide Squad, which is, you know, basically just introducing villains in here and then giving us little glimpses of of the Flash and of Batman and, you know, expanding on the, on Batman's ethos a little bit here. And then you get one woman where mm -hmm. it is an origin story. And it is one that honestly is needed a little bit because not a lot of people know Wonder Woman, um, or well, or if you read the comic books, well, or uh, if you're reading the comic books, it's she has probably one of the most retconned origins in comics, in my opinion. Hmm. So it's you know it does get confusing. So they're like, okay, here's this person, here's what she can do, and they did it with color. This is when when that movie came out, and I I was at work, I was telling people I'm like, oh my god, this movie is so great. Because the, the scene alone where she's coming out from the bunker because she wants to help, and I'm, I, I'm noticing this while you are drinking out of your Wonder Woman mug, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that she's with, with her shield, and it's dark and grimy because it's World War One. Is it World War yeah, One or World War Two? Yes. One. It's World War One, and it was dark and depressing then. And you see her red in, in the red and blue just popping all the more as she's you know basically doing a captain america you know deflecting bullets with her shield yeah when her suit that. is actually pretty dark <laughs> yeah you know so i did I, I definitely noticed the color in that scene as well uh of her, her costume and i thought that was great that you know because when i first saw the costume i thought oh that's too bad it, I, I don't really like the dark um so much but um i do now so yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I just saw Wonder Woman for the first time on Friday, and I don't know why it took me so long to see. I mean, I do know why. I, I had uh, the, the, you know, worst summer and uh, didn't really have time for things. But, yeah, um, I, w I was pleased with it. You know, I it has a lot of potential i think i think um yeah. they, they had a lot of ground to cover to get the story going so you know yeah and and i, I want to i sort of want to end this part on what growly says uh growly puts in here in the chat marvel's problem is how to keep making hits dc's problem is how can we make a hit he's right because i mean well, i mean didn't these movies do really well at the box office i mean didn't not as expected or yeah, projected not, by the XX. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. I mean, we're, with with some of these, they're expecting you know billions. Um, like like what Rogue One did was it, they were expecting with Rogue One and all that stuff, where it's and, like, and oh the, my gosh, it's gonna break. You know, it's gonna break the bank. And then I believe it lasted until Guardians came out, mm. which I think they were wanting. Yeah, it did oh, well, we're gonna. It? Yeah. yeah, it did it. well. It did better. Yeah, it did better, but them all. So there, yeah, there's no denying that. And the only part I had an issue with with the movie Wonder Woman was the end. 
And interestingly enough, it was when the colors changed to the scheme that the Batman, uh, uh, Man of Steel and Batman vs. <laughs> Superman had, when it went all dark and CGI and the whole emboss fight, uh, as you would call it, the third act was a little bit of a mess. And it mm-hmm. was just in the moment when it appeared to be like the other mo- DC movies. And it was like, oh, oh yeah, there's room for improvement, but it was the best <laughs> movie so far, which is an easy uh, oh. thing to achieve. But... Really? Yeah, uh, he's also co- saying that he has hope. He is not there just bashing DC and saying, yeah, it's all shit and we have to c- oh, come no. up in a fet- fetal position. No, he's saying they know that. They're actively working at changing course and promises yeah. that Justice League will do that. Well, interesting coming from him as Superman is, spoiler, that in <laughs> the last movie. So he w- isn't going to be in it, and yet he is touting its horn. So it's okay. Honestly, though, I feel like it's one of those things that if he is dead throughout the whole th- throughout the whole movie, and this is where we're going to play speculation here. Yeah. Um, if he is dead throughout the whole movie, that's one thing. He'll st- he'll still be in the movie because of the fact that you know they'll do cutaway scenes. I saw one of the trailers before I saw Thor Ragnarok, where they're talking about. Uh, Lois Lane, she goes outside, and then it's Clark Kent, and he, you know, he had just proposed to her, and all that. That's stuff that we didn't see in Batman versus Superman or in Man of Steel. You know, we didn't see him propose to her and all that stuff. So it's that that could be yep. one route that they take is you know more flashback Superman. He better and, put a or, ring on it. He did. He, she, you know, she <laughs> said yes, but then Batman beat him until she until he said Martha. Martha. <laughs> right. um, and so the other one but the other one the more popular one is a lot of people are thinking that you know he's going to come back in you know very similar to superman doomsday where he's mm. going to you know come back in you know he's died and then he's yeah you know he comes back in the black suit and all that stuff and i'm like uh, but i would like to see that being played after doomsday is actually officially you know Debuted not the abomination Marvel character that was the bag bad that emo Lex Luthor created in in uh, Batman versus Superman, mm. which wasn't a good character to begin with in the source. So no surprise there. The, the decisions they made were boneheaded at, at times, and the things that they course corrected the levity a little bit, bringing that up and uh, showing the trails that there are. F- things called laughs that people can smile that's a, a, po- a possibility wow okay we're yeah. moving that's, forward <laughs> that's the other yeah. big thing i love about the justice league is it does look like they have more fun yeah more fun <laughs> that everything i've seen with ezra miller is his character is you know his version of the flash is he's being the comedian a oh i should say a comedian not yeah comedian because that's yeah, obviously Thomas Wayne yeah. or Negan, depending on which universe you want to go to. <laughs> and the internet will have a fight because they're going to say that's all Charles Sweden's influence. It's going to be like Marvel all the time and all that shit. Yeah. And oh yeah, try to be different. <laughs> and I understand that I will come that because we need companies like Fox doing Deadpool or doing Logan and doing things differently than proper Marvel Disney does. Yeah. And why not change it around? But you can't just base all your sh- all things on that. Like, I like Zack Snyder. I like Watchmen. But also, Watchmen was a story that was making fo- fun or a comment on the whole superhero genre. Yeah. And then bring that to the to the characters they are to making fun of. That it doesn't work. That tonality and the whole thing was strange, to put it mildly. And when they're going to do the course correcting, it has to be liked for Ragnarok from what I hear that you have to find the right tone. You can't just make quips and make it good. And you can't just be dark. You have to find the right in between. And they made the best decision to get Whedon on board. But it, it shows a little bit lack of creativity when you have to bring on the same guy that did it for Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. just like giving in. So, yeah. So, excellent point. B, I have a question for you, oh. and Jackie, I have a question for you. He could probably answer it better. You, so go you, ahead. You find you, you find yourself at a door, 
Actually, no, I'll put it this way. You find yourself at two doors. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, actually, that's what I was doing. I was trying to transition into the next story. <gasps> awesome. And that is, yeah. And it's that we are getting a... And actually, because I'm going to pose an interesting question with this. The Twilight Zone is coming back. Yes. Um, Jordan Peele from, you know, from Key and Peele. He's also the director of the horror feature Get Out. Mm-hmm. Nice. He is set to uh, be show running this uh-huh. on CBS All Access. So CBS's CEO Les Moonves on on this past Thursday announced this during the their earnings call that this was going to be happening on All Access. Yeah. My first part with this is it's the same trepidations I had with Star Trek Discovery. Yep. It's oh, on CBS All Access. You mean you you didn't already have it because you were watching the Big Brother live feeds twenty four seven? I live on. Okay, <laughs> I I did get it during the Big Brother live feeds. Oh, you did catch you, you, it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. You you know me so well, Jackie. But here's the problem. I'm on <laughs> no. the East Coast. No, yeah. Here, yeah. Here's honestly the problem and why I didn't keep it. Oh, I'm okay. on the East Coast. When I check it before, you know, as I'm, you know, like before I go into work and do a, you know, doing a closing shift. Yeah. They're all asleep because it's 6 a.m. over there. Uh, yeah, or it's 6 p.m. and they're all asleep, or it's 4 yeah. p.m. and they're all asleep. It, yeah, you know, yeah, no, yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, I I actually watched it f- several seasons of it and know a lot about it. Um, I had a uh, I guess I guess I'll call my ex or whatever I don't know, who whatever who worked sound for Big Brother. Um, so I don't. It's not that I've watched it because I wanted to. I'm not going to admit that. <laughs> but I've watched I'll admit it. No, no, no. Anyways, but yeah. No, actually, I think the live feeds, the 24-7, Big Brother was a very interesting experiment. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, way, particularly when it was in other country, or it still is in other countries. But yeah, it's funny that they've had this live streaming service for so long, and it's not until Star Trek that people even know what the hell it is. I know a lot of people who didn't even know it. All access existed until now. Yeah. And, um, and they're going to need some good content. Uh, and, yeah. and that's the problem. You look at the stuff that they have, even before all access, there was the, on the Big Brother front, there was their, the all access exclusive Big Brother over the top, which I don't even think ended. Yeah. I did. think they just went, well, I no, actually, I, actually, I, no. They rushed it. <laughs> You're right. You know Actually, they, they didn't tell the cast members either, and those people are still in this house somewhere. They <laughs> think that they should... <laughs> they're yeah, have but, one by now. Yeah, they ended it super quick because no one was watching it. Right. Because I'll tell you right now, that was a misstep because of the fact that you use CBS All Access for the 24-hour news or the 24-hour feed. Mm-hmm. Why would you then have it to be where, oh, well, this is where we're going to do the live program part and all that stuff? Because they're like, well, I just watched all the stuff that, you know, then you get summed up on the episodes. Right. On CBS. Right. Well, they they make it an effort to turn off the feeds many, many times throughout the day or any time they kn- know something is happening. Even, even to the point where if people are just fighting, arguing, they'll turn off the yeah. feeds so that they yeah. have something for the show. Um, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, so yeah, it, oh, real mess. I would hate to work for that show. (laughs) So one thing with Twilight Zone. Yeah. Let's go back to that. It's a pretty old show. No, no. It's just the thing that it's an anthology show. Mm -hmm. And does that work for such a streaming service? Because if you don't need to binge watch a season, you just can catch one or two episodes. An episode on its own, have it all. Well, Black Mirror seemed to do pretty good and even take home some Emmys. That's honestly what I was going to get get at here, because you know, to quickly do the whole CBS history thing or All Access history, they did over the top. They did a spinoff for uh, The Good Wife called The Good Fight, and then huh. Star Trek Discovery is the one that everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it's going to be great." You know, we're going to get this, and fans aren't really liking it, but but critics are loving it. I personally, ha- I'm more of I like liking the Orville, but that's that's besides the point. And so with this, it's it's one of these things like it does sort of like it makes sense, you know. Jordan Peele is a great writer, mm. you know, he, and he's shown with two projects that he that he has a huge range mm-hmm. with he and Peele, and with Get Out that he mm-hmm. has this huge absolutely 
Yeah, I was totally surprised when I found out he was behind uh, Get Out, um, yeah. you know, for the first time, whenever. Well, I think I knew that. Well, I definitely knew that before I saw the film, but. Nobody you know. remembers Keanu. <laughs> yeah, the, the kitten. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Another comedy. So it's, and it's one of those things that, like, what would you, what would you rather me say? Keanu and Get Out when he's done better comedy with Key and Peele? Which, mm. which Keegan Michael Key was also involved with Keanu, so that that's that's why I did that. It wasn't, and also I did forget about Keanu. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Everybody about that too. did. Jeff, you, brought the, yeah, you brought the other interesting part of Black Mirror. We have Black Mirror. Um, I've now, been I, hearing that comment everywhere because I I actually I have a podcast on um, Black Mirror um, called Black right. Mirror Reflections, um, and uh, but. Yeah, I've been so I've been been watching any talk of this uh, Twilight Zone, and I've seen so many comments from people saying, "But we have one, and it's on Netflix," you know. But that what's wrong? No, I I mean I love this. I'm so happy that they're going to bring back Twilight Zone, and I, it it doesn't even have to be Jordan Peele. I'd be happy with, uh, you know, not anybody, but <laughs> but you know. So yeah, why not? I, I look at it this way. Black Mirror is all about technology. It's, it's a different... About, it's, yes. It's all about the, how technology will affect humanity. Mm -hmm. The Twilight and Zone is not limited by it. Right, exactly. They get, explain you explain what it well. is, because many younger people, including maybe one on the show we have... Oh, true? Don't, don't, no, check shit about it, and bring to us the idea, what does... <laughs> I love you too, Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what is the show about? Tell us, uh, Jackie, please. Oh yeah, uh, the Twilight Zone is. Um, oh gosh, I, I used to know the the intro, the 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 guy. You know, when you, the doors are moving around and Rod things are Charlie. flying. Yeah, uh, but no, it's it's basically it, the, each episode is a different story, of course, and it has to do with the abs uh, absurd, bizarre coincidence. Things that happen in sort of your everyday life that make you think there's something else behind this. This is this is not what reality is. I'm seeing some other universe. Like Gregor said, it's not limited to just technology. While many episodes are related to the horrors of technology um, and how technology uh, makes things easier for us, but they also kind of take things away from us. Uh, but that is definitely something that Charlie Brooker focuses on in Black Mirror. So as, compared as the, to... the young person who be so eloquently called out, I will point out that, yeah, where, yes, I didn't watch a lot of the Twilight Zone, the original 1959 television series. Oh, I, I'm not I, that old. <laughs> no, I did. I did actually but I watch watched this. them later. And, and actually, I started watching them on all CBS All Access about a year ago when yes, I had this. Chuck, but you have good taste. Not like where. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I did watch the second revival on oh. UPN that was that Forrest Whitaker hosted as the you know as the narrator and on screen host. And the, he, yeah, and so where it's like I do know a little bit about it. You granted it probably wasn't the you know best, most expected, but also good god, they did forty three episodes for one season. It was a decent show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, even the originals, um, there were God, I mean, it had to have been close to 30 episodes. I should look that up before I speak. But but I remember uh, each season. Uh, not per, se per season, though. Oh, no, no, no. Original series had 150, uh, 156 episodes, so yeah. But anyways, I mean, if you look at the dates, it, it was almost every single week, aside from maybe two months out of the year. Um, for the years that it ran. Again, I'm kind of just speaking from my memory of when watching on CBS all, all Access last year, so I don't really know. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope they'll they'll do something similar. I hope it's not short like Black Mirror, where it's like one season is four episodes, and then you gotta wait another year or two. <laughs> but so. that's the British way. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But um, I'm because looking forward a, to it. As a guy who watches a lot of British television, that is the British way. Yeah, Twilight Zone, they, they did more 36, which is, is it's, 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 that part is weird for me because of the fact that I, I tend to favor more the British 
let's do you know shorter series or seasons to have mm-hmm. better content mm-hmm. as opposed to the american 22 let's to 24 episodes mm-hmm. you know where, where really it's a you know maybe a 12 episode season that we have you know good ideas for we can stretch out you know 12 more episodes of, of filler and fluff to put in here you know that's actually been a problem for me uh, lately that i've been trying to I mi- I've I started missing like all of the CW shows. Like I started watching uh, Supergirl when it first came out, and then I stopped. And then now, uh, you know, I wanted to go back, and you know, I can watch the first two on Netflix. You know, I, it's like twenty episodes a season. I don't know if I can do that anymore. I can do a, a general. I mean, I think Netflix has totally programmed my mind to need exactly <laughs> eight to twelve episodes, eight to ten episodes per season and then i don't want to think about it for a year and then i then i think oh it's february it's starting to get really cold hmm must be time for whatever show <laughs> house of cards yeah you know but they have an overarching no, yeah. story so you tell the beginning middle and the end yeah that's you true have an anthology, but this question is that oh yeah good something point. you can't wait because the star trek discovery that has 17 episodes if you call it <gasps> well from. oh well yeah <laughs> actually well with with black mirror i have a theory and i know there are other people out there who have the same theory uh but that black mirror actually exists in a single universe and um i think that they are they they slowly try to hint that to you if you watch each episode very carefully but you know the but charlie brooker denies it but i think that that's because it's it would be spoiling like a big part of what Black Mirror is if, if, if I don't know. Um, I, but, I prefer that I prefer that over the Christopher Nolan. Sure, he's Robin. <laughs> okay, fair, fair <laughs> enough. Good. Didn't the UPN show do the same? They had uh, some stories that crossed over and the end accumulated in in some episode that brought it together. So the idea. I think that so. New? And Black Mirror's had a few. Uh, I, have you guys both watched Black Mirror? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes, I got th- them coming to Netflix is actually what got me into it. Okay. Yeah, I watched it uh, when it was a Channel Four show. Um, right towards the end. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I didn't catch the first season. But the uh, there's a there was in be- right in between going to Netflix. There was a John Hammond Christmas special, yeah, mm-hmm. as the UK, British do, <laughs> um, called White Christmas, and. Um, that was the first of the link w- where it really started to show kind of the links between all of the stories yeah. and and then in this last season the last episode oh man boy this has been a year since i've thought of them but um the nation um hated nation or hate in the nation i believe the bee story the one with the bees uh, anyways, that that one was also a, a centerpiece for that entire collection, that season's collection that ties in the whole uh, Black Mary universe. But I really sound like a crazy conspiratist. Um, but maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> I also have things tacked up behind me that I'm keeping notes on. We're so, just, yeah. we're just, yeah. The only thing you're missing is just the red string connecting the dots to all I just, of it. I just need the red string, right? Yeah. <laughs> But do you think it's a draw for people to get CBS All Access to get a show that isn't one story that you have to keep up with and kind of talk about with other people? So you can say, ah, oh, you see that story? You can wait a year or two if it ends up on whatever service afterwards. That is kind of, I mean, it worked for Black Mirror, and that's a streaming service. But this is a different scenario with CBS All Access because they're they need to build the content they're not at the level net, that netflix is right now netflix could do anything and it could do well or not it doesn't it wouldn't matter if it was netflix or not i look at it this way it's it is a good step but it is not the final peg to get me to subscribe to the service oh yeah no no it's a good it's a good move in the right direction i would say yes but but then again, I like the Twilight Zone. I like those t- um, types of shows. So, but uh, it may not be good for someone else. Maybe they should do a show about dudes who take cars around the world and <laughs> make. <laughs> <joke. laughs> they get along real well because like they went to college together or something. So <laughs> they've been together longer than their ex-wives were 
dating them. <laughs> they yeah. were with their ex-wives. <laughs> yeah, or the ex-wives of all those guys. They get in some cars and drive around the world and, and uh, get into... See, here, uh, here's, here's your problem with that one, though. That wouldn't be she, on CBS All Access. That would be on E. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. You're right. <laughs> or Bravo. Well, yeah, I don't know. One of those. TLC? Something. Yeah, one of those... One of those. Pure entertainment networks. <laughs> <laughs> and and the women would always be stopping and asking for directions, right? <laughs> so, um, oh, that's great. I love that. So, I, I actually I wanted that to be a show now. <laughs> <laughs> great. But yeah, so actually this is a great part to end the news uh, segment uh, because we got more things to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, real quick, before we get into the views, I want to let you guys know, if you want to help us out, make us make the program better, we have a survey for you guys over at bit.ly slash ensurvey2017. That is E, capital E, capital N, capital S, and then Irve 2017. All, you know, the numbers not spelled out. And basically saying, how can we make the show better? So go there, fill it out. You'll help us out. The other part, the way you can help us out is by going to our Patreon over at patreon.com slash galactic netcast. It's an easy way for you to help us, you know, keep the ship afloat, keep us going. And, you know, you get stuff at, you know, a dollar level, you're getting stuff. The I believe there's Peter Fisher's applicably app review uh, with guests show is one of the things that you get. And it is pure awesomeness. You can find all that over at patreon.com slash galactic netcast. For more on this Galactic Network podcast, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com.